Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Reasons to Believe podcast. My name is Daniel White III, President of Gospel Light Society International. This is podcast number 94. God has been under attack, unfortunately, in the world almost since the beginning of time. I say unfortunately because God is love, uh, but he and those who believe in him are under attack now, it seems to me, more than ever. Atheism is increasing and atheists are becoming more vocal around the world. This podcast is, among other things, an ongoing debate response to such people as Richard Dawkins, Bill Maher, and others who don't believe in God and who preach atheism to the world. This podcast is also designed to equip Christians to do what the Holy Scriptures command, and that is to earnestly contend for the faith and to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh us a reason of the hope that is in us. But more importantly, this broadcast slash podcast is designed to give you a reason to believe in God and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our reasons to believe passage from the Word of God today is Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. It reads, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Dear friends, our reasons to believe quote for today is from Malcolm Muggeridge. He said, supposing you eliminated suffering what a dreadful place the world would be. I would almost rather eliminate happiness. The world would be the most ghastly place because everything that corrects the tendency of this unspeakable little creature man to feel over-important and over-pleased with himself would disappear. He's bad enough now but he would be absolutely intolerable if he never suffered. Our reason to believe PowerPoint today is titled God in Nature, Four Problems of Cosmology, Part 2 from the Handbook of Christian Apologetics by Dr. Peter Kreeft and uh, Dr. Ronald K. Tassili of Boston College. Is evolution possible? Allow me to share this uh, personal note before we get into this uh, deep question. Please understand we're getting ready to go deep again. So let me make a plain statement up front. We believe in creation that God created the heavens and the earth. No doubt about it. The conclusion of this study will say the same thing, but in case you get lost along the way, I thought I'd 
see that first. Now back to our text. By the way, if you don't have this uh, fine work by Dr. Peter Kreeft and Dr. Ronald K. Tassili, may I encourage you to get the Handbook of Christian Apologetics as soon as you can. They go on to say, in answer to the question, is evolution possible? They go on to answer by saying, if it were impossible, that impossibility would have to come either from the creature or from the creator. Scientists and philosophers do not all agree about whether evolution is possible, whether the nature of species makes evolution impossible or not. The jury is still out. Though many people on both sides feel absolutely and totally convinced, there is no impossibility on the side of the Creator. If God wanted to arrange for species to evolve from each other by natural means, He certainly could have created such a world. So, as far as either scientists or theologians know, evolution is possible. Whether it actually happened is undecided. The theory is indeed in scientific trouble. Perhaps it can be salvaged. That is for science to decide. What difference does evolution make? What makes a great difference is not evolution as such, but two other ideas that are often identified with it, natural selection and materialism. Natural selection basically means the survival of the fittest. According to Darwin, it is the mechanism by which species evolved. Now, this could be one of two things. It could be the means God used, the force he implanted in nature from the beginning, in which case natural selection is a part of divine design, or it could mean a way of eliminating divine design. For Darwin and most of his followers right down to the present, it has usually meant the second. And the elimination of divine design does indeed make a difference. If it is true that we evolved simply by blind chance, not divine design, then our lives have no overarching meaning, no preset divine plan, no script. The only meaning, purpose, or values that exist are the ones we invent for ourselves. These can never be right or wrong, justified or not justified by a higher standard than our own desires, which created them. Thus, there is no real reason to prefer Christian ethics to Stalinist ethics, for instance, except one's own desires themselves. Desire becomes its own reason, its own justification. Does evolution involve materialism? Not necessarily. The evolution of the body seems to make no difference if the soul is distinguished from the body. But if there is no soul, or if the soul is something that naturally emerged from the body and naturally evolves, then there is no essential difference between humans and apes. Our bodies are essentially the same kind of thing as ape bodies. If we have no souls, or if our souls are also essentially the same as ape souls, then there is no reason to expect anyone to act essentially different from apes. This may explain much current social history. What makes a difference is not where the body came from, but where there is a soul. This may explain 
much current social history. What makes a difference is not where the body came from, but whether there is a soul and where it came from. Now, my friends, that's deep. Let's pray for God to help. Holy Father God, we thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you give to all people. Uh, Lord, uh, thank you for these uh, studied men uh, who put this wonderful book together for us to read and to get a greater understanding. Uh, I have a Lord, wisdom comes from you, and we pray that you'll give us all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that we can uh, apply your truth to our lives and to the lives of others. For Lord, if indeed uh, you are God and we know that you are, uh, then we must answer to you ultimately. We must obey you. Uh, we must uh, live our lives according to your will if we are going to be successful in this life. Uh, and so we must also give you the glory, praise, and honor and believe in you by faith and believe in what you have said by faith. Uh, Lord, help everyone under the sound of my voice to do that. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray and for his sake. Amen. Dear friend of mine, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, may I encourage you to get to know him today. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will. If he can save me, he can save you. Jesus Christ has said it well. Have faith in God. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, please keep in mind these reasons to believe. God bless you.